Bitcoin briefly climbed back above $16,000 today, rallying more than 53, more than 50 percent from Friday's low. By the way, Coinbase made news today after it warned of transaction delays due to high volume. Is the cryptocurrency worth the risk given the recent volatility? Joining us now to debate it are Nick Colas from Data Trek Research and Larry McDonald from the Bear Traps Report. Welcome to you both. Um, Larry, you think this is a bear trap, don't you? Well, I mean, uh, I think as Buffett once said, the three eyes, the innovators, uh, the imitators and the idiots. And, and I think you guys have a pretty good hand on the finger on the pulse here in terms of kind of the, some new players coming in. They're probably uh, late money. And uh, we put a note on on December 12th recommending the gold miners as a hedge. Gold miners are up about 8% since the, since the 12th of December, and uh, Bitcoin's down about 8% 8, 8 or so. So I'm, I'm recommending clients move up, move into either hedges on, on Bitcoin. Yeah, or but the problem is you're as crazy about gold and the gold miners as all the new kids are about Bitcoin and crypto. <laughs> Everyone's going, Larry, come on, stop beating me over the head with this well, stuff. Well, just, just, I would just, look, look, if, if you want to take a long-term look at uh, cryptocurrencies, look at natural gas, look at uranium, because what's happening in China, you're talking about uh, a, an energy usage 16 kilometers uh, above uh, their, their, their usage of, of Bitcoin annually. And uh, that's unsustainable. So natural gas, uh, nuclear power, uranium, there's right. a, lot of, a lot of ways to play it. You're a, you're a cautious bull. Yes. Now, I, I mean, I, I've made no secret of the fact that I just think that this is a speculative bubble now but I'm separating that from the practical use of a cryptocurrency and the speculative mania that has caused these wild swings in prices those are two separate things here w where do you stand on this uh, do you see a big future for the cryptocurrencies themselves the way I see it is you've got to merge those two concepts together you're absolutely right because the underlying technology is, first of all, rock solid. The Bitcoin blockchain has never been hacked. How many systems can you say on this planet have never been hacked right. and are so complex they probably can't be? So you tie that back into all the potential uses of Bitcoin, the currency, over time. And it feels a lot like, say, online shopping in 1999. When I hear Bitcoin naysayers, not my friend Larry, but people who really think it's a bubble and going to zero. Or today we had a CNBCO.com article saying 10 years in, nobody has come up with a use for blockchain. Yeah. Yeah, that was funny because it's so factually inaccurate. First of all, it's not 10 years old. It, the first, the ninth anniversary is next year. Okay, nine. Second of all, for the most of the prior eight years, it's been the realm of illegal speculation and all kinds of other nefarious things. Only in the last 24 months have we seen real adoption. And Blythe Masters Company actually got the Australian Stock Exchange to use the blockchain for their settlement process. So there are real uses in place now. I think about program trading in the 1980s that was supposed to keep the stock market from crashing, and it caused the crash of 1987. I think of the dot-com mania. I think of the collateralized debt obligations, the, the those infamous CDOs that had a big role in the, the market crash in 2008. Am I wrong to equate all of those manias with the one we're seeing right now with uh, with Bitcoin? You know, manias are like families. Every happy one's the same. Every unhappy one is different. And so this one feels a lot like those prior ones. But at the same time, there really is underlying utility to this, to this technology. And I think properly constructed, you can see a bright future for it. But it's too early to say for sure it's going to happen. And what form it will happen? Bitcoin's now less than half of all the cryptocurrencies outstanding in terms of market cap. It can go down to 25 to 30 percent because other ones take their place. Larry, it's interesting because I think even Charlie Munger was making some remarks the other day about, look, I can't even see the case for gold. At least you can wear it or, yeah. you know, it has, it has some value, but uh, but not for the cryptocurrency. So are you, are you just bullish on the yellow metal or are you specifically bearish on the prospects for Bitcoin well, and cryptocurrency? Bitcoin's 100-day moving average is down around 7,000. And last year, Bitcoin hit its 100-day 100, 100 twice in 2017. So we're probably going to have a drawdown in that seven, eight thousand range, and it's probably in the near term, I think, because just because of the the money that's moving in. And then if you look at sustainability in terms of China, I'm talking about China, they're, they're selling this year 340,000 electric vehicles. Uh, it's up from 30,000, five, say, five years ago. So countries like China are, are buying electric vehicles at that type of pace, and they're using 
40 percent of the world's Bitcoin. So there are sustainable issues here and facing Nick, the air we, we got to go, but I will say I know that the ledger itself has not been hacked, but plenty of exchanges and wallets and everybody holding it. So effectively for the user, you've had myriad problems with uh, the cryptocurrency security. Yeah, that's right. The, uh, the stuff on top of it still needs a lot of work. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, Thank you. Polis, Thank you. Larry McDonald on you know what. <laughs> <laughs> Up next, we're coming